Welcome to the Lost Signals Reviews, the American Film Institute's Top 100, where we critique the supposed 100 greatest American movies of all time. Join us as we decide if they're worthy of the Mox Top 100. Hello there, welcome back to the Lost Signals Reviews, the AFI Top 100. Tonight we are doing Modern Times, a Charlie Chaplin flick, which is uh, number 8, or I'm sorry, number 78 on the list. And I, of course, remain your host, Scott Thurlow. Joined tonight by Jonathan Ian Manzer. Plagued by Modern Times. Mm -hmm. And Stephen Amosi. Just being a tramp. Yep. And uh, so I'm going to toss it to E for the logline for this film. In the immortal words of the boss, tramps like us, maybe we were born to ramble on. Indeed we were. (laughs) So I'll continue on and explain that uh, with the plot of the film. So this is a Charlie Chaplin flick, as you previously mentioned, um, <laughs> detailing Charlie Chaplin being plagued by modern times, mm-hmm. as the title suggests. <laughs> now, uh, Charlie uh, is in his form as the tramp, uh, the character he made is one of his most famous characters, and factory worker, has a nervous breakdown, <laughs> ends up out on the street as the tramp. Continually gets arrested and beset upon mm-hmm. by the uh, uh, tribulations, the, the uh, Great Depression, um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, and he ends up falling in love with another tramp, and they try to make it in the world, and well, uh, you follow their adventures through a kind of <laughs> series of vignettes, as it were. They bounce, them. they bounce between various jobs, and again, like you said, try to make ends meet. Uh, I, I will say that this entire movie has a sense of tragedy and despair to it that you like every mm. time something goes right not only because it's a chaplain film but like it has a sense that it's not going to work out <laughs> yeah. and it's like something is about to go wrong and that goes into that part of life it's two like well, not even lovers like just uh companions two fellow souls <laughs> trying to find happiness and in a very bad situation the best they could with the modern in the modern world in modern times so i'll pass it on to you guys for Man, your thoughts. what do you think steve yeah i i you know i i think this is a a, a pretty strong two movie uh in terms of plot it's um there's not a whole ton of depth to the plot mm. as you mentioned it's just a bunch of vignettes of basically Charlie Chaplin gets a job, Charlie Chaplin messes up somehow, Charlie Chaplin gets arrested, Charlie Chaplin gets let go and goes and gets another job mm-hmm. and starts the whole thing over again. But um and sometimes he doesn't mess up per se, sometimes things happen to him as he was right. saying, but nevertheless he gets bounced out of whatever little job he happens to be in at any given vignette. As you, as you know if you've watched any <laughs> like of the tramp stuff that Chaplin does, it's just a series of uh, horrible events sometimes caused by his own uh, fumbling and <laughs> sure. bumbling Some and sometimes by others. Yeah. yeah beset upon by the world now this actually there's uh, one scene I wanted to mention or one trend I find in Charlie Chaplin films is that just when you're kind of like go tired of him getting like shit upon by the world <laughs> he rises up and shows a it has a moment a of like mm. of complete competence or hidden skills, mm. and it's even more tragic because they never work out for him <laughs> either. Yeah, like even at his best, life will crush Charlie Chaplin, and it, it's and it's, by, it's, it's, by it's, the extension, all of us. Yeah, and uh, again, I <laughs> sure. think thematically this movie is very strong, and but the narrative is simply a vehicle for the themes, and we've actually seen that. In a lot of movies yeah. over the course of other reviews, right? But uh, this one is very much. It's just we're going to show you what being a waiter or working in department store <laughs> back in this time was like. We're going right. to show you what being in jail was like, and <laughs> they're funny, but uh, again, not the strongest narrative in the world. So I'm going to give it a sh- uh, strong two with a two in the list. Now you guys are pretty much right, and I, or at least I pretty much agree that it's a very strong two, but just not enough for a three. It it's simple. But you can follow along and because, as you said, it's strung along. It's made. It's a string of vignettes that creates like a a greater plot at large. Mm-hmm. But as you said, I think we'll get to in a moment about themes that it's there's more weight there on that front. But plot wise, structurally wise, I'm giving it a very strong two, I believe, as well as you guys are. Yeah, the strongest that the plot is is kind of following the story of the two of them yeah. and how they grow closer. But 
I don't think there, there's enough there to give it a three, so I'm going to stay Go with a yeah, two as well. I think we're pretty much agreeing. All right, Steve-O, so uh, go on with uh, with themes, in fact. All right. Well, there's... <laughs> so it's a really interesting uh, take on, you know, the modernization of the world at that time. Charlie Chaplin in the first scene goes absolutely nuts from working a job that's overworking him and making him tired and... And repetitive and, and, and yeah. boring. And so, I mean, right from the outset, you kind of get what the title is all about and, and you kind of find out what this movie wants to talk about and you see that repeated in his attempts to get jobs during the great depression modern times is kind of like the world crushing (laughs) the little guy you know like uh but it's also about his resilience and his ability to go back out and try to do something new and and find something else to do so you know find some happiness within right the crushing part of it (laughs) sure and i think there i think there are further themes as well but um i don't want to i want to i want to hear what you guys have to think as well so this movie is not (laughs) kafka-esque but uh the trial and uh the modern times share a lot of similarities i agree with that too yeah in what they're making a comment about they they're looking at it from different angles uh certainly but that kind of thing with being He's literally crushed by the cogs <laughs> of the machinery. Well, he's not crushed, but he is <laughs> run through them, I guess. Yeah, <laughs> that's and, true. Uh, like it, it's it's dealing with very much like you're saying, with like finding that finding that semblance of happiness because life will never give you a a hand up. You like every time it does, it kind of slaps it down for him. But his optimism throughout it, you're rooting for him. And he never gets, like, broken by it. Yeah. He continues throughout it. And overall, it's a very optimistic outlook at the soul-crushing uh, machinery that we all find ourselves in in modern times. I mean, generally, yes, that is true. And I agree with uh, the, 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 all the themes you guys have said are there. Of course, I'm just going to expand upon it. Like, yeah corporations will crush individuals or they always have and they still are so like that's fine that that certainly that was there especially as exemplified in the uh, like him like going through the little cogs of the of the factory there and like other jobs too like uh you know the being a waiter and so forth and trying to make ends meet and yeah just trying to find some semblance of possible solace in the greater world that is just going to almost by default like indifferently crush you like you said um and the Kafkaesque angle, the triangle, I certainly sort of thought of that while we were watching it. So yeah, and Chaplin, he wrote and directed uh, all his films, I believe. So he he knew what he wanted to say, and I think he, of course, used his talents as portraying, uh, being the tramp, to comment upon, like, you know, what the industrial society, if you will, was ha- was doing to people was happening at the time. And I still think, as we said during the film, it was quite re- it's still quite relevant. It still stands today. So I think it was all well addressed. I don't know if there's anything we missed, but I think certainly everything we said is very obviously there and very well integrated into the yeah. film. So he has a really um, on the nose shot at the beginning with sheep going through yeah. a, uh, <laughs> a pasture and then oh no no it's the uh, the, 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 the slaughter. Uh, oh, was that, it that? Uh, just a bunch and of then sheep. It shows um, humans going through down going into the factory to go to work. Uh, yeah. yeah, but uh, there's. Uh, it was an interesting thing. I still haven't kind of figured out what it means, but perhaps you guys can mm. enlighten it. Yeah. Uh, the use of dialogue in this. So at first, the only thing that was ever voiced were either the boss, but not the boss physically, the boss through yeah. uh, the monitor to yeah. say to his employees, you had... An Aurelian the, screen. A very <laughs> interesting, yeah, a very yeah. weird, uh, like, futuristic for that time, I yeah. think. Like, yeah screen and uh, that was that well, was an odd thing it's exaggerated like it's his like you know like it's his portrayal of the overseer boss keeping tabs on the entire factory and yeah. like increase production get make it faster but the inventor gives his speech about the feeding robot through via a, uh, a robot <laughs> uh through a gramophone yeah mm-hmm. um then you hear charlie chaplin sing at one point so it's it's i i there wasn't i don't think a the only kind of consistency between the use of actual spoken dialogue was 
that it wasn't about uh, between pe- humans communicating between each other, with each other. Yes, right? I did notice that. And you're right. That's a good little detail for sure. And I think that was an intentional, uh, uh, certainly mm, intentional. Absolutely. Uh, com- I don't know how deep it is. I'm not sure. Um, but there's like throughout this, this movie is smart. And even though it has a lot of slapstick humor, it has a lot to say about. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, I agree. I mean, I think modern it, times. <laughs> yeah, it, I think it uses the slapstick humor, like to to say something about it, to make a commentary, and I think that it was a well done commentary. So, and uh, and as we, we something we haven't mentioned yet is um his relationship with the gammon, which is a word that I learned today. <laughs> mm-hmm. Um, uh, played by Paulette Goddard is. Uh, it's interesting because they're both kind of on the outs with society. She's right. like a homeless, uh, urchin, basically street urchin. And he has like gone to the mental hospital and come back and now he's looking for work, but can't seem to do anything right. You know, can't seem to keep a job and they kind of meet each other on their way to jail and, uh, hit it off. And, I'm not sure exactly, like, I need to think more about, like, kind of what he was trying to say by that being the case, that they were, like, you know, on their way to prison or Mm. to jail when... Well, they're the fringe of society, like you said, in in a sense. Yeah, I guess maybe that's, it's, maybe it's no no deeper than that. No, but I also think that, you know, like, for instance, uh, Charlie Chaplin goes to prison, Mm -hmm. uh, or not his character does, and uh, <laughs> and he wants to go back there because it's a stable existence. And Oddly enough, for it's very it. much yeah. like the factory he came from. Uh, and the only way that, yeah. he gets out is because he met, uh, or since wants to stay out is because of his relationship with the Gaiman. Meanwhile, the Gaiman is in a really dire straits. Mm-hmm. She's a very good-hearted person who's just established, but they give each other something to live a uh, hope, or even if it's an illusion uh, mm. that for the future, yeah. that to, at least together. They can. They could possibly dream happiness. of a future. And you, you just kind of brushed over this, but I think it's kind of an important as far as themes go. Is when Charlie Chaplin is released because of his good deeds in jail, he doesn't want to leave and he tries to stay. Yeah, that's true. And then he spends until he and the gammon meet. He spends all that time trying to get back to jail. He just starts stealing food and things like that, and takes credit for her crime and ha- like tries to have the cops bring him off to jail because. Things are much worse for him outside than they are inside. No, at least in just provided for and so forth and statement. Um, you're right. That's that's a good little um, layer in, as well. Yeah, in terms of like the Great Depression being on at that point, like I'm sure that's a feeling that a lot of people were going through I mean, at the time. Even even today, that is something a lot of people exactly sure. yeah it's, go through. It still stands. A like lot of homeless in. people attempt to get arrested in winter yeah. in order to get um, some food and warmth. Uh, it's yeah. It's again. This is. He does a lot of humor, but this is a lot of depressing sure, kind of yeah, right. Sub- substantial about. and serious stuff. And, and and before we get off of themes, that's actually a really good point is that I think you were talking about when we were watching the movie is how much this actually reflects, you know, mo- modern, actual modern, <laughs> modern times, like now. Like Contemporary current, to us. Currently, yeah. yeah. To that point, um, I guess it was the final thing I say, unless you guys inspire me to say otherwise. Um like the, the, they're dealing with strikes and how strikers, uh, uh, people striking are treated, and you see today that the teacher strikes going on. So again, yeah, people not much has changed <laughs> since he made this. Protesting yeah. get better working conditions yeah. has, has always been sort of an issue, but yeah, I think it was all there and it was all well addressed, and none of it was overpowering by anything else. But it was all, like I said, pretty seamlessly woven into the story. So I'm gonna give it a one. Completely agree. I think it's pretty strong ones all from right. all this. Ones there, from right? all. All right. Well, that'll bring me to antagonist. Uh, yeah. The crushing uh, gears of <laughs> modern society, like we sh- certainly have said that before in other episodes, but I think it's fairly obvious here. That's like at least the biggest one to me. And maybe you, I was gonna make a joke like the the first the factory oh, overseer, like boss man, sort of like Andrew Ryan <laughs> in a sense, like make it m- more you know, increase pro- productivity, <laughs> work faster, get, get back to work, no break for you, etc. All that. So like yeah, just like like you said, sort of trying to uh, live and survive. And find again some kind of like personal uh, solace in the face of a crushing, I mean, it's not crushing per se, just a relentlessly driven industrialized society in the midst of, yes, a depression as well, which also could be uh, sort of drawn a parallel to, again, modern times mm. as we are in. So, yeah, like I think the antagonist is just 
the world itself, like the way society is shaped in a sense and trying to navigate that and find something that you can hang on to and look forward to, even if it might be an illusion, but you might have at least some kind of hope slash chance of, you know, getting out of it. So bosses and <laughs> cops. <laughs> okay. <laughs> But were the cops really the villains? They were just, they weren't like corrupt or anything. They're arms of the machine. All right, right fair enough. That's a... I'll, I'll go with that. <laughs> so go on. They were, yeah, they were just constantly trying to arrest him. That's it. Uh, it no, but I think because he was committing crimes and asking to be arrested. <sighs> is is he literally stole food and went to a cop and said, "Yep, here I am, arrest is me." It... He well, literally was forced to drink a cask of rum. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> I suppose. By, is, by is, hungry stepping, is stepping on a uh, board and accidentally flinging a rock at a cop's head a crime? Not really. I don't it's, think so. It's an accident, <laughs> but he gets blamed for it. In, anyway. In modern times, he'd be shot for that. <laughs> That's true. Jesus. Possibly, though. But all I'm saying is like, yeah, what you just said as exemplified by what I just said. Mm. So, Yeah. No, I, I agree with you for the most part. I'm, right. I'm just... I'm just having a little fun. It's busting my balls, fair enough. I mean, <laughs> but I still think we're both somewhat right. Like one's more tangible and one's more abstract, as we normally do. And but I think they they imply each other. Yeah, and I think two that, sides. Of I same think coin. that regardless of what you think is the antagonist, Chaplin feels antagonized. Through yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing's going right for him. I think he fate is fucking him up. Mm -hmm. It is also obviously. Discussion of upward mobility in society, mm. and that the working class can never achieve, because uh, they're kept down. Because they're kept uh, mm. again, by, by the uh, bourgeoisie, mm. by the man. Uh, I mean, the first thing he was arrested for, besides having a nervous breakdown, is being mistaken for a communist sympathizer. Yeah, mm. that's true. So, uh, viva la revolution, mm -hmm. Charlie Chaplin. <laughs> so that means you're giving it a one, though? Yeah. <laughs> I figured. All right, well, you can go on then with protagonist. Or ists. <laughs> Interesting. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I guess I could see both of uh, both tramps. Uh, Lady Tramp and the Tramp <laughs> being um, <laughs> uh, uh, being protagonists for this. And, I, mean, I think that's similar, uh, true. Um, Somewhat arcs. Mm -hmm. Yeah, arcs. Mm -hmm. Uh, although it's interesting that she can't escape her past, uh, that's her past is what comes back to mm. on her. Well, Charlie Chaplin, for the life of him, can't reclaim even his negative past. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. He goes, <laughs> but uh, no, so, yeah. I mean, like, I root, I root for Charlie. He's a talented actor. He's one of the best suited silent uh, comedy, and The Tramp is such a classic character. Mm. You can't help but root for him. So I'm going to give it a very strong one. Yeah, uh, I I pretty much agree that I think they're pretty fifty fifty because you follow like they're introduced early and they sort of meet up in the middle, and then they they're trying to find each other or at least when they decide they want to try to build some kind of life, however, you know, quality or not it might be, that you felt like she goes to get a, the job at the cafe while he's doing whatever, so they meet back up and they both work at the cafe towards the end. So yeah, I think they both did a, a very good job of portraying like the downtrodden, you know, just trying to again to scrape together to make ends meet in the modern times. So I think uh, they both share credit, and of course, Chaplin is, you're right, like, he's the master of being that character and uh, putting him in situations. So, but I think his, you know, his love interest slash uh, companion was also perfectly fine, and they shared enough screen time that they both, for me, equal a one together. Mm. A pretty strong one, in fact. Yeah, I agree. Chaplin's a one by himself, but mm. uh, she did a really good job Playing the, you know, the ragamuffin. The, the, <laughs> sure, the yeah, playing his his constant companion throughout, or uh, the the one who was always waiting for him at jail when he got when he exactly. Got <laughs> They're always searching uh, each other out after whatever escapades they were involved yeah. in. So I, I mean, it's it's a strong one for me. I, I don't have too much more to say. Ooh. I mean, yeah. if you've seen a Chaplin movie, you know what is you know if you've seen a Tramp movie, you know what the character is like and. Sure. He doesn't disappoint in this movie. It's it's really good. Yeah. So as good as ever. All right. Well, that's so actually uh, you can keep talking to Zivo because you're on two secondary or supporting characters. All right. Um. So I was trying to think of like a specific supporting character that I really enjoyed, and I was having like trouble like nailing one down. There are a bunch of them throughout, but none mm -hmm. of them really do all that much, other than act as like. Uh, 
stage props for yeah. Charlie Chaplin. Uh, well, go on. It's it's this because because he goes through like I don't know six or seven like types of jobs, so each one has a different sort of boss, different like you know, uh, one the people who are involved in that job that he has to deal with and interact with in whatever way it may be. Yeah, but was, they switch they switch pretty fast, so each one like you know is introduced and then is gone like pretty quickly. Right. So yeah, there's not like one that I wouldn't. I agree, there's not one standout, but I might argue for them all, like, sort of as we just well, discussed themes, encapsulating the theme. All right, go ahead, Eve. go ahead. Eve. There is one with a mark. I I was I was gonna I was just thought of one, mm. and maybe you're gonna say the same thing. Uh, right, the good. big uh, big Bill. His co-worker, yeah, big Bill. Yeah, his co-worker that's what at I was gonna the say. factory. Yeah. Mm. You get to see him later on turning to crime in order to feed himself. In a sense, he has a similar trajectory to. Uh, Charlie Chaplin. He's like he's like a darker shadow, yeah, but version. He not only updates like the factory clothes mm. and gives you information about like, the state of the world, but you get to see like other people. And I I think he almost, probably partially lost his job because of the destruction that Charlie Chaplin made his breakdown did. Possible, yeah, it's somewhat so, implied there. Yeah. So like I don't know, it gives it fleshes out the world a little bit, and here again, he does have it. It's a small arc, but it's still. A little bit more character development than everybody else. Yeah, yeah. I actually, I actually mm. really enjoyed that part, and I think that I would give it a one just for him. Um, everybody else is fine too, but he's the one that actually has some character development. Mm. Uh, so I'm, I'll, I'll give it a one for that. I'm not giving it a one just for him, but I think there was enough of them. So, like again, if you assign a little bit of credit to each one as it goes along, then they all add up to a pretty solid one. Although for me, it does not stand out per se. But you're right. They did their job, and like he plays off them as needed, and it's perfectly fine. I'm sorry. The engineer drinking stuck in stuck <laughs> in the machine at the end, <laughs> drinking tea through a chicken. Through a t- <laughs> through. I mean, does that make him a good character? Or is it just like a funny gag? <laughs> it makes it for, for the fact that he was willing to put up with that <laughs> uh, with know. only mild exasperation. <laughs> I don't know if it convinces me on characters, but I am still giving it a one overall, regardless. Yeah, one for me. One for well. everybody. Mm. All right, that'll bring me to dialogue, which again is a it's a difficult, not difficult, but because it's a Chaplin film, there's only like very, very small bits of dialogue, and even like the um when when the boss man was like saying you know, increase productivity on on line seven or whatever, yeah. that's actual dialogue. And then with the presentation with the automatic feeding machine is presented uh, <laughs> through a like automated player, and then so so like the the, t- the title cards, like when people are like, we we need to go right now. So I don't know if that's technically dialogue per se, because a lot of it, and we've made this argument, we made this point before where you can make an argument to say that there's a lot of visual, like body language dialogue going on, mm-hmm. but that might be all style. So. Well, the one thing is, I've already discussed this, but the fact that they do have spoken dialogue in this, and none of it is between Humans. people for yeah. real interaction. And I think that's yeah, that's the a good point. That's a good thematic element. But I think it's, it's also an of, aspect. Mm. Like it's the, the use of the dialogue there has, okay. I think, a point to it, even though it's not probably the most interesting dialogue. All right, you might have uh, actually convinced me, and I just reminded myself of one thing. So we recently did um, another AFI. We did two thousand one, a mm-hmm. uh, little bit, a couple episodes ago where I argued that the lack of dialogue is an actual dialogue. So I think I will have to be consistent, and I think you convinced me to think of it that way. Go ahead, Steve-O. Yeah, so there are, you know, the the, the dialogue cards as well mm. that contribute to the dialogue. None of that is, like, outstanding or anything, but, you know, it's a silent movie. Says what it needs part. to say. Mm. Um, or it's a, you know, it's not really a talkie for the most part. <laughs> um, <laughs> but... Uh, I don't know if I'm going to give this a one. Just actually, you know what? And I get Ian, it. I, I can see know what? why. And I think you did convince me, based on the use of the actual spoken word. Mm. Um, uh, maybe I'll give it a soft one. And obviously, Fair enough. it's not like you know, it's not soft on account of anything weak per se. Yeah, just because it, there's it's, not much. It's a of function it. of what the movie is, you know. But yeah. I, I think I will. I think I will. Uh, end up giving yeah. it a one for that. No, I get you. I just my final thought is I could see you if you did give it a zero. I wouldn't like fault you in any way for that. Yeah. But it seems like you're somewhat swayed and giving you enough credit to give it a one. Mm. All right, so we're back to going to style, and that'll be you. Eve. I really like Gold Rush. 
And I think that's a funnier movie. That certainly is more <laughs> joke wise. But however, I think that again, this does Charlie Chaplin style in spids, and it's it's a funny movie. It's I think a more mature movie in a sense mm. for him. Uh, you can see the evolution of of where Gold Rush yeah. leads to this. I, I would say, yeah. So I I think genre wise it. It does exactly what it needs to as a comedy, hmm. but with a little bit more substance than comedies I, I generally expect from a sound movie to bring. Um, okay. Soundtrack-wise, it was also Charlie Chaplin. Mm-hmm. I think it was fairly uh, good. Um, a couple of <laughs> songs remind me of other uh, <laughs> yeah. like songs that... Um, I got yeah. that I got that going on, too, when we were watching it, sure. But, I don't know. Yeah, this is a good like it's a he obviously put a lot of thought into developing this and and just a maturation of his style so mm. i'm gonna for that i'm gonna give it a one yeah well said there's a lot there's a lot of really interesting uh camera movement in this movie yeah hey, right and shots have to give too. credit for mm. it it's the the camera's moving a lot like i think a lot of stuff that came after this uh took elements from this and probably other chaplain stuff as well but like you know it, you can see kind of the influence that this type of movie had on later film and mm, definitely that being the case i mean i i can't not give style a, a one also you're right like the i actually i really like the music for this um it's my only complaint is my same complaint for any movie that came out in like the pre 1950s is that like <laughs> They don't have the levels quite right, and sometimes it just gets really loud and like piercing, and like sure. sometimes it's a little low. But you it doesn't know, make the music bad. It's, it's just not. That they yeah, that's, that's it. a function yeah. of what they could put on film. It's not a function of the movie. But like, yeah, it's it's uh, it was a really well done flick, uh, technically from technical aspects, and uh, I have to give it credit for that. No, I agree. Oh, sorry. Do you mind if I just jump in quickly? I just want to highlight one i think scene that was really well done comedy wise which was the department store roller skates oh um, yeah like that is a <laughs> classic uh charlie chaplin but it's also like it was really well shot that yeah i i know nothing really bad is gonna happen but i'm still like he just plays with your emotions a lot when it comes to that yeah so you know i'm not entirely convinced that that wasn't an actual like <laughs> He, he might have been actually doing that, and like if he fell off of there, it probably could have hurt himself. Like hmm. there was a lot of there was a lot less uh, being careful back in those days. No OSHA compliance yeah. uh, back then. But no, I mean you guys are right about all of that. But I'm going to say I'm going to lump um, choreography as well, like sort of kind of mm. like that. Of and course, the dance numbers and like all that stuff. And yeah, he's he was a master of using like body language to express what otherwise would have been expressed in dialogue. And we've said that previously, and it still stands here. And finding actors who can do that as well, you know, to have, like, exaggerated expressions and um, you know, waving their arms around, like... Yeah. So, all that stuff. So, yeah, it's it's always top-notch, and it still is here, so i got to give it a, a very strong one. Yeah, I, I'm surprised it took that long for one of us to mention choreography, actually, but that's... Yeah, well, I was waiting for it. I thought very, you guys might before, but... That, that, that is yeah. maybe one of the best parts of the movie, uh, of any, like, Chaplin movie, well, right? His, so, um, the scene at the beginning where the... And this is a very famous scene. Um, it, even if you haven't seen this, you might be aware of it, where uh, mm-hmm. the uh, conveyor belt is going by, and he, he's he kind of, it's almost a Lucille Ball yeah. Like, uh, yeah. with the chocolate thing. <laughs> or maybe she stole it from that. Mm-hmm. But um, it's uh, like the, the choreography of everyone there having to participate in this Very ridiculous sequence. Little, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, you're right. So it all, it's all top-notch, like I said, and uh, you could probably find just that scene easily enough, and it's sort of an example of why it's so good. Yeah. Yeah. All right, one's all around, and that will fi- finally bring us to recommendation with you, Steve Ramosi. Yeah. Do you recommend Modern Times? Yeah, of course. Go watch it. <laughs> it's, uh, it's it's a silent movie, so if you are a uh, someone who doesn't like silent movies... Um, Fuck off. I wasn't going to be that harsh, but... <laughs> well, I am. Go on, Maybe though. Maybe you won't like this, but <laughs> maybe you should give it a try anyway. It's Maybe you haven't watched the right one yet. And, um, I mean, it's not all silent, as we mentioned... But it is still in the style of the silent film. Mm. Um, so, yeah. I mean, it's it's really good. It's a enjoyable watch. It's not too long. It's an hour and a half long. So, um, 
you know, go check it out. Charlie Chaplin's hilarious. Um, well, I would recommend the film Modern Times. But um, <laughs> but not the thing itself. <laughs> I do not recommend Modern Times. I recommend but, Medieval Times. <laughs> I, I do. I, I was laughing hysterically throughout this. Uh, I think it was... I, I like Charlie Chaplin. And if you like Charlie Chaplin, you should watch this. It's it's a intelligent film. It's a funny film. And if, if you're not into like the 30s style thing, get some culture. Go out and watch this. It's, <laughs> it, you're going to find something new that you're going to like. Um, so, yeah. No, I agree. I, I definitely recommend it. So I, I'm probably the one of us here who's like the least into this sort of style and genre from back in the, the time. But I still do think it was very, very well done, as we just talked out. And I, w- I would say I had this is the first time I'd seen Modern Times all the way through. I had seen Gold Rush before when we viewed it, and we haven't done it, but I've seen The Great Dictator a couple of times, too. I still think that's the best Chaplin film, but I think this might be my second favorite from all the ones I've seen at this point. And yeah, I absolutely do recommend it. And and like you guys said, if you're not as into it, maybe this will get you into it. And I wasn't like... Laughing hysterically, but I was chuckling on a number of the gags, and it, because it's all very professionally and entertainingly done as well, and it has something to say just beyond being like gag jokes and you know like slapstick stuff. Mm. So yeah, it's definitely worth a watch, and I do recommend it. All right, uh, that will do it, I believe, for the scores, and I will give them out. Finally, I don't have to do math. Uh, looks like we all gave it a nine, which gives it a nine uh, a- aggregate. So yeah, pretty fucking strong. It stands, and like we said, it still is relevant and can ring true today. All right, so any other final thoughts? I'm out of times, my friends. Aside from what we just said, <laughs> you recommend the movie but not the thing itself, <laughs> etc. Yeah, I'm good. All right, well, I think that'll do it. Thanks for joining us uh, for the AFI Top 100 Reviews. I, of course, have been Scott Thurlow, here with Jonathan Ian Manzer. I'm going to go have a cask of rum. Mm-hmm. And Stephen Amosi. <laughs> have a good night. And I'm going to roller skate off the edge of something. See you next time. Good night. Editing and engineering by Stephen Amosi. Music by Christopher Morgan. Check us out on YouTube and iTunes for the shows, and on Facebook and Twitter for updates.